worked very hard for the last two and a half weeks to try to bring my room to an entire new level and it has not been easy a lot of trials a lot of errors i should say that i have made which you have seen on my short videos and of course on my channel by now um, but it's finally come to this so so please come in and check out my room let's go Before I get started and show you my new lab, Jay's Audio Lab 2.0, please subscribe, hit that like button. I've been sharing with you all my pain points, all the different challenges that I've had from gluing the panels at the top you know, on the roof, all the diffusers um, to you know the carpet that I selected, um, everything that you can possibly imagine. If you want me to continue to put out content like this where you're walking with me, please, I urge you to support the channel by subscribing and hitting that like button. Okay, so join me in my new space in case you don't know this room was a garage a two-car garage but let me show you what can be done in a space like this well there you have it okay well check out my room jay's audio lab 2.0 Okay, so let me get started with the this type of acoustic panel. This is called the Vicoustic Vic Audiophile VMT Kit. You're seeing it on your screen right now. Uh, it MSRPs for $3,400 more or less. And what you get for this is essentially four of these panels. You get four of the diffusers like these. Four of these right here. Okay, so you can essentially make two two by twos here and then two by twos right under it. Okay, so it all adds up to up four feet high, two feet wide. Okay, and this is what they look like. Really pretty. If you're wondering why I selected this color, okay, as you know, this is a multi purpose room. So it's not only just for two channel, but I also do home theater. And I own a Sony 6000 ES projector. I had it calibrated and the calibrator that was in here told me that you don't want anything that's too bright inside the room. You don't want any white walls, which is why I selected this color. You don't want any white carpet if you can avoid it. And obviously you don't want anything that will be essentially enhancing the contrast, the brightness of your projector. So I went for this natural brown oak. You also get these diffusers as part of the kit, okay? So you get four of these. So basically, as you're seeing right now, this makes up this entire wall right here, okay, this kit. And then also, follow me, this right here. So you have all of this right here that comes with the kit, right here. So all the way, basically, both side walls were treated with this VM, with this Vic Audiophile VMT kit. Now, the rear of the room, which is where I sit, check this out. We have the other type of diffuser, okay? This one is the light diffuser, okay? It has foam on the back in the past. In case you're wondering, I had this on hangers, okay? And they kept kind of falling down little by little due to the vibration of the room, right? the base. So you're gonna see how these panels begin to start sinking and then they lose the alignment. So I went ahead and glued them, okay? So they're glued, they're not going anywhere. And that was my entire intent for doing this, by the way. 
Okay, so let's walk over here. Let me show you. Again, we did the same thing here. This is part of the VMT kit from Biacoustics. This comes with the kit. So we treat it with some diffusers here. These bass straps, okay, which by the way, I really love because these are Biacoustic uh, bass straps as well because you can do this. So if you're looking for some sort of diffusing, uh, a diffuser, you can just turn them. Now you got a diffusing surface. In this case, which I haven't done, I should have all three modules on this side to make them bass straps or absorbers, okay? So that's what I love about them. And the fact that you can move them in the room, which is the case for this one, check this out. When we walked in here, see this one, when I listen critically, I'm supposed to kind of place it there. Took me, what, half a second? And now we got this corner covered. That's the way it should be done. Okay, so I love the flexibility that these bass straps have. Um, I haven't seen anything like it. And quite frankly, I like the way they look too. Plus, you know, it's by acoustics. I want to keep everything together, the same line of products. By acoustics, by the way, um, was the one who designed my room. I didn't just randomly select it spots okay everything was done by them it's a service that they provide in case you do not know and they did a phenomenal job and i'm just showing you what how things turned out to be so here we have the other absorber okay right behind it um in order to cover some of this wall now some of you all have been asking me about this screen okay this is acoustically transparent okay perforated all right so behind it there are one, two, three speakers. Okay, the reason why I did that is because of the fact that I don't want my two channel to have anything to do with my home theater. I'm never going to replace these speakers. I have no interest in doing the same thing with home theater um, as I do with two channel. Okay, so because of the fact that I'm always rotating speakers, imagine if I were to, you know, move on to the next set of speakers. Now I have to find another center channel that matches. I don't have the time for that. So my home theater is completely isolated. Speaking of home theater, let me show you my home theater side of things. Okay, so I bought these new Artisania stands, which I am a dealer for. Over here, you have my Panasonic UB9000. Blu-ray player, which barely gets any use. Over here, I have the Oppo 205, which is a well-reviewed uh, product. As you know, this company is no longer in existence. This is called my Mad VR Pro, okay? This is a video processor, for those of you who do not know. Quite expensive, I think it's like $12,000. There's a new model that came out, which I have already ordered. Okay, this makes a significant difference when it comes to my uh, video, the video quality of my system. Then I have, of course, a Mark Levinson right here at the bottom. Mark Levinson, three channel power amplifier, which runs the three speakers behind the screen, okay? Again, this is the other side of my home theater. Morantz 8805, which I feel it's kind of outdated by now. I should look into something better. Morantz 8805. We got an ATI uh, Class D 8-channel amplifier, which runs my surround sound speakers, my Atmos speakers. That's basically all this does. It runs really cool. It's got enough power. And then, of course, on the bottom, I have a Synergistic Research power cell. This feeds all my home theater stuff, okay? That's the only job that that unit has. It doesn't talk to the rest of my two channel, which is what I'm about to show you. Okay, so now here's my two channel side, okay? This, again, you have seen this preamplifier. This is the Darzeal battery operated line stage, okay? This is the latest version. I believe it MSRP is for like $80,000 current MSRP. Beautiful piece. As you can see on the screen, I love the way it looks. I think it looks very classy. Uh, but that's my point of, that's my opinion, my point of view, and you may not be to your liking, and that's fine. I love it. Okay, underneath we have a Sim Audio 650D transport. Okay, this is a CD player which can also be used as a transport. So right now I'm using it as a transport. Okay, underneath we have the Strong Tank S1000. Okay, this is one of the best power conditioners 
that I have ever owned, and I've owned plenty of them, okay? I am a dealer for Storm Tank, so I am biased, okay? I'll be honest. I love it. I wouldn't use anything else to correct my power. Then over here, we have the Tico Extreme music server, okay? This is, in my opinion right now, the music server to beat. I am also a dealer for it. I am going to be honest here. I love it so much that I became a dealer for it, okay? Having owned all of the renders available, I can tell you that the Tico Extreme music server takes things to an entire different level. Above, we have the Boulder 2110, a preamplifier that you have seen many times here, okay? It made a return, and this is the matching power supply right here. So there's separate Boulder advices that you keep the power supply away from the control unit, okay? And by the way, in case you haven't watched the Boulder factory tour, there are many videos that you should check out so you understand what Boulder does behind the scenes. I do have the full factory tour, including an interview with Jeff Nelson, president and CEO of Boulder Amplifiers. This is an amazing video that you cannot miss. It's over an hour long. Okay, it's getting finished as we speak. Please check it out once it drops. Okay, so here's the thing I wanted to say about the stands. The reason why I became a dealer for Artisania Audio, okay? So, first of all, the look. Very, very streamlined. Nothing is bulky, nothing is excessive, nothing seems to be like just too much in the room, okay? That's one reason. Another reason is let me show you here at the top, the adjustability. So you can actually, this entire shelf right here, if you went ahead and undid the, the uh, bolts that are here, you loosen up these bolts that are around, around here on these corners, okay, with an Allen wrench, you can actually lower this whole shelf. This is what I did here. You see that? I lower the shelf just enough so that I can put two components right above. This is something that a lot of other stands do not do. You buy it, you can't do anything with the shelves, with the, with the height of the shelves. There's no adjustments. So that's very appealing to me because I know I rotate way too much gear and sometimes I need to make space for taller components. And this gives me that flexibility. It's 12 shelves total, MSRP of about $24,000 more or less. Just so you have an idea, it's a huge investment I'm not gonna lie here, but I like the fact that nothing is on the floor. Nothing is on the floor anymore, okay? To me, that's quite appealing. Now, let's talk about amplification. I have the 2160, Boulder 2160 here, an amplifier that you have seen several times on my channel. So this amplifier right here came with the 2110. Now, I would say it's probably one of the highest price performance amplifier pre-amplifier combos that I have ever heard and I've owned many of them um, I like the fact that again it's made in the United States in, in, in Colorado bulletproof stuff you know I love everything about Boulder this is already known by the way the Boulder 2160 is on the Artisania Audio Master Key or Amplifier stand this stands MSRPs for 85 USD 8500 that is USD Okay, it handles up to 700 pounds. As far as speakers, no stranger to you by now, Wilson Audio Chronosonic XVX, which by the way, they are finally fully calibrated to my room and are officially on their spikes. So they're no longer on casters, they are perfectly time aligned to my listening seat, which is about 11 feet away. Um, love the speaker, love a lot of the things that this beast does, never get tired of it. And you will be hearing this speaker now in this fully treated room, okay? Speaker is perfectly positioned now where it needs to be. I had some professional help come out and fine tune these monsters and I'm liking what I'm hearing. Now, on the floor, of course, you'll see the very, very small album collection, vinyl collection that I have. Now, right now it's on the floor because I'm trying to figure out what is it that I need to 
properly place them in some sort of a rack but I want something pretty. I don't want to rush through it. Something that fits with my mood in here in the room. So for now, they're just seated there, okay? To kind of add a little more flair to the room, like it's a music room. My turntable, which is not set up at this time, is the already known Kronos, okay? This is the very first version that they released. To me, it sounds phenomenal. I know of Oz from Let There Be Sound is more than excited to come out and tune the turntable again, set it up for me, and then hopefully listen to some tunes here because the room does sound completely different than I remember it. If you're wondering how much money was spent in this room, taking into account all the treatment, the carpet, brand new carpet, uh, the stands that I had to buy, and of course, miscellaneous, I'm going to say to you that this was approximately Twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars that I had to drop in this room to elevate it to this level, and I do believe it is Jay's Audio Lab 2.0. The question remains: Does it sound better than my old room? I know you are very eager to know if it really lives up to the hype and if it was worth the investment. But I'm going to leave that question open right now. Just continue to support me. Stick around here. Let me know your thoughts about what you think of my room now. Now that you see all the attention to detail, all the effort for over two and a half weeks, working relentlessly day in, day out, trying to bring this room to where it is today. Give me your input. Do you think it was worth it? Do you think I should hear a difference? Have you done this before? Comment below. Thank you again for your support. And I want to close it by saying... You are not ready to see what's about to come into the lab. This coming weekend, I will get hands on my next reference, Power Amplifier. Oh, I know you can't wait to see that video drop, so I urge you to subscribe right now. Hit that like button. Please continue to support me. Thanks.